Hey everybody, welcome back. And today we are going to talk about Roger Parfum's Diaghilev, a very, very fantastic and very high quality, quite divisive, as a matter of fact, fragrance. It's a fragrance that either turns heads towards you or away from you. And that's probably a few things. One is the smell. It's not to everybody's taste, I would say. And the other is the price. That's not to everybody's wallet size or capacity, I would say, also. And the other one is the fact that it smells, let's get this out of the way, the fact that it smells eerily similar to Guerlain's Mitsuko, which is a very old fragrance. And that, in and of itself, is enough to make people upset with a fragrance. I don't understand why. But anyway, I went ahead and bought myself Diaghilev. Did I buy a full bottle? No, because I've smelled it before, and I know that I probably won't wear this so very, very often. It's not like an everyday scent. Everyone who smells this will tell you it's not something you're going to wear every day. It's not a gym scent, for example. It's it's very long lasting. It does perform very well. Let me let me wear it because I got me I got me one of the Roger sort of um, well, travel atomizers. Let's call it that. It's a seven and a half mil, and um, they kind of rest like this. The, they do their travel atomizers quite well, and I think it's pretty good value if you want to have a, a pretty good wearing of this without. Having to splurge, you know, what is it, one and a half thousand dollars or whatever it is for a full 100 ml bottle. I believe it's also been reformulated. Don't quote me on that uh, because the juice color is different. Oh man. Okay. I'm going to wear it. I'm going to spray it on here. One will be more than enough. It just smells like I'm about to get dressed in a tuxedo or some kind of just well-dressed attire and go out and go out to a place where you not only sit, but you also dance, but you dance with a partner um, and there's you know food and drink and music and a dinner dance, a ball a gala or something like that. I find the citruses in the opening are just beautiful. I find that the the bergamot, the orange, I think there's orange in here and there's lime and there's also a creaminess underneath all of that. So it's like a creamy citrus at the very opening, right? Just delicious. And there's like a creamy rind going on. It's almost like this creamy bitter rind of a citrus going on in the opening. And the opening lasts, it's not fleeting. I wish the opening lasted a lot longer than it does, but it does give way to some of the more substantial notes in this fragrance, of which there are many. And in the mids, you're getting quite a bit of like florals, like you know, rose and jasmine and heliotrope and violet, all of which just combine to make a scent, a beautiful scent. I really, really enjoy it. I really do. However, when it dries down, gets down to that oak moss and civet and leather and stuff like that. But the thing that's underpinning all of this is the thing that is so similar to Mitsuko. And Mitsuko is a fragrance that I picked up last year and I have been trying to review it, but I haven't been able to review it properly yet. So I'm working on that one still. And the version of it that I got is this. This is the Eau de Cologne of Mitsuko. The thing is, this Eau de Cologne is from 1967 and it hadn't been opened. And I opened it, luckily without breaking breaking the thing um and it's it's kind of pungent at the moment but i had decanted it somewhere but i'm going to put a little dab of it on my hand here just to let that sort of air out a little bit because it's a little bit different when you spray a fine mist versus the 
the dabber. I'm not a huge fan of the splash bottles and dabbers because they just don't give you the right distribution. Now, I'm going to forgive Mitsuko a little bit because of its age. It's nearing 60 years old, this particular juice that's in this bottle. Um, it's a testament to how well it's been crafted and probably how well it's been kept, that it still smells amazing. Like, I can still smell citruses in the opening. But unfortunately, they're just not as bright. They're just not as realistic or present or recognizable. And they give way much too quickly to what is ultimately in the base here, which is that signature oak moss. The oak moss and the spices. Now, the, the spices here in Mitsuko give it a little bit of an edge and a little bit of a funk, but ultimately you can't really smell it until you get closer. What you do smell in the air with both of them is the peach. The peach, which is in these, well, ultimately they're Sheepra fragrances. So that's what you're going to get. You're going to get the oak moss, you're going to get some fruitiness, some florals. Amazing, amazing, Diaghilev. Also amazing, Mitsuko. They kind of separate, they kind of differ, right? And I don't know it's because um, I'm wearing the Eau de Cologne and the Eau de Cologne of the Mitsuko, I find it a bit more fruity, a bit lighter wearing and sort of it doesn't really rely too heavily on like leather or anything like that. It's just oak moss and peach. And I find it amazing. No doubt, no question. However, Diaghilev is just on another level. I've... I've I've seen reviews of it, that people try and review it and everything like that, but uh, you don't understand it until you smell it. You can smell Nitsuko all you like, but when you smell Diaghilev, it's something else. It reminds me of something I, I read. Um, hold on. Reminds me of something I read in this book. Um, a book by Steve Stewart Williams. It's called The Ape That Understood the Universe. And it says, what is originality? It's undetected plagiarism. So that's a quote by someone else. The interesting part about all of this is here. One of the most important mechanisms, it turns out, is the ability to copy each other. That's our species' clever trick, is stealing ideas from other people's brains. Our clever trick is plagiarism. Elephants have their trunks, giraffes have their long necks, and humans have their ability to plagiarize. We do it compulsively. So when a scientist couple raised a baby chimp alongside their own child, they soon discovered, much to their alarm, the child copied the chimp a lot more than the chimp copied the child. At the other end of the life cycle, People's last words on their deathbeds are apparently quotations, as in other people's words, not their own. And Darwin wrote, Much of the intelligent work done by man is due to imitation and not to reason. And he was right. And he asks, When was the last time you invented a new knot, a new tool, or a new piece of furniture? Even if you could invent such things for yourself, it wouldn't be the best use of your time. After all, they're already here for the taking, and that's the primary advantage of imitation. We learn through imitation things it would take us forever to learn for ourselves. As such, we've evolved to do a little bit of innovating, but a lot of mimicking. That, I think, pretty much sums up Diaghilev, is that it's, it's imitation with a little bit of innovation bringing the modernity to it. Now, another point that I want to actually call out um, before I put this book away and continuing on here, it says, given the demonstrable benefits of imitation, it's a curious fact that people take such a dim view of it, especially in the individualistic West. Albert Schweitzer once observed that when people are free to do as they please, they usually imitate each other. So this was clearly not meant as a compliment uh, but people take it in whatever way they want to take it, right? So we prize uniqueness and originality, but copy each other relentlessly. And we do it because it works. 
Although copycat is a derisive term, copying is a successful strategy. We're virtuoso imitators who look down our noses at our own virtuosity. That, I think, also adds another element to this in that the people who detract from, you know, fragrances like Diaghilev might sort of detract from it because it's copied something, it's so similar to something that has been done before and it's basically a copy. They might even call it a ripoff or something like that because of its price. However, we all imitate, we all copy. We're not true pioneers or innovators. The true, there are some of them, there are some of us who are true pioneers and innovators. However, none of those guys, none of those people get the love. They don't get the accolades, they don't get the respect that they deserve. They're usually called ahead of their time. That's what we call it. It's just such a, such a heartbreaking term anyway. The thing is, we do mimicry and we do it very well. And we look down at people who do it, which is a shame because I think Diaghilev, even if you don't really have the necessity nor the wallet for a full bottle, I think that it's a landmark fragrance. Like in terms of taking what has been done in the past and providing that innovation over the top of it, using newer methods of constructing a fragrance, I think it knocks it out of the park. I absolutely adore it. Phenomenally good scent. If you can get a chance to smell it, go and try and smell it. And if you, of course, you'll have a chance to smell Mitsuko. I believe the the newer versions, the parfums, the other parfums uh, that are out at the moment, are actually reformulated quite well by Guerlain. There's some good ratings and reviews. I've tried them as well, and they're quite nice. And I think they stand up to the legacy of Mitsuko, which I will review. But in the meantime, if you can test them out, test them out. Let me know. Let me know what you think. If you've tested both of them out, let me know which one you prefer and why. Because I, I want to find out. Because to me, they both have a place. However, like in terms of quality, man, Diaghilev just knocks it out of the park. Um, blending, you name it. Roger's done a really good job with this one. And that's it. That's my thoughts on Diaghilev and a little bit of Mitsuko as well. And uh, I'm not going to waffle on for too long, but uh, there you have it. Thank you once again for watching and please subscribe.